we get high winds uh, pretty much year round, but in the winter we get the uh, snow, we yeah. get uh, frigid temperatures, and we tend to lose power in the winter. Do you? Yeah, so that's a problem. I would imagine things freeze up pretty quickly out here. Right, so we've got a natural gas boiler All right. uh, that provides us with the heat. That's good. Uh, and our well yeah. is on the electric. And of course, those are two of the things that we really have to have in order to keep this house open. Okay, so you have well and heat with natural gas. That's good. It is. However, we're also in an earthquake zone. So about six months ago, we had a 7.2 earthquake. So natural gas is not always an option for us. Wow. All right, so you need to power some lights, some outlets, a well, and a heating system and natural gas is not an option? Right. All right. I think I have a solution for you. Let me show you what I brought. Okay, great. All right. All right, Bill, here's your new portable generator. Oh, wow, this is really nice. Yeah, so it's a good size. It's 7,500 watts. Wow. And basically it has the same engine style as a snowblower. It's a four-stroke engine. It has a spark plug, an air cleaner. You gotta check the oil. Other than that, as long as you keep gasoline in it, it'll run for as long as you need it to. Okay. A lot of people will just plug right into these plugs right here. Right. And they'll run cords inside through a doorway. It's really messy because you have to pull out a refrigerator, plug it in. It's a pain in the neck. Okay. What I like to do here is use this outlet right here. Okay. Because with one cord going into your house, we can send 120 or 240 volts into your home, which is the same power as the utility company uses. Okay. And also those really tricky things to wire, like your hardwired well and your hardwired heating system. Right. Those aren't even an issue because it goes right into that main system. Okay, perfect. Now, I would assume this is gonna live in the garage? Yes. Okay, and you roll it out, Right. start it up. You can't run a combustion engine in a garage or any sort of space, so you gotta pull it out of there. Okay. And it's not a great spot right out in the middle of your driveway here. So yeah, I'd it, prefer to not have it out front where everybody can see it, so maybe out back? Maybe out back would be a nice spot. Why don't right. you show me what you were thinking? Okay. okay. So Scott, will this area work? Yeah, this works good. So we need to stay five feet away from any window or door okay. because of combustion. Right. We got that. Yes. Now the next thing we need to do is put a power inlet on the side of your house okay. that has a wire that goes into your electrical panel. Okay. What's on the other side of this wall? So that's a finished media room, uh, but our utility room is over here next okay. to these vents. So right there on the other side of those vents, that's where your electrical panel is? Yes. All right, that works. Show me what's inside. Okay. Scott, this is our utility room. All right, nice. I would assume these are these vents that I saw from the outside? Correct. All right, that's a great reference point. We got our drinking water here, a yes. well, a whole heating system. Yes. Beautiful. All right. And uh, the main electrical panel here too. Sure. Beautiful. So the main power comes in from the utility and it sends power to the back of all of these circuit breakers where they snap in. And then on the circuit breaker, there's a black wire usually, and that distributes the electricity to the lights, to the outlets, to the heating system, to the well. Okay. Now that wire going up to those, we need to disrupt that. We need to interrupt it. We can't have the utility on at the same time as the generator. Okay. That's where this comes into play. This is a manual transfer switch. It's got all these wires okay. on it, and it mounts right here next to the panel has these 10 circuit breakers. So they protect the circuit while the generator is running. And then it's got these really neat selector switches. So in the up position is generator, bottom position is line. Okay. So basically it's gonna live in the line position. When the utility power is on, it stays there. When you lose power, you start the generator up, come downstairs, put that in the up position which says generator, and then those 10 circuits are isolated from the utility. Power comes back on, you see the stuff that wasn't on when the generator was running, you come downstairs, put it online, and everything's running on utility. Seems easy. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna mount this right next to the electrical panel. Okay. And tie it in that way. All right. Okay, that's good right there. The main shutoff in this house is out at the electric meter. So while I turn off the power, I need you to choose the 10 circuits you want to run with the generator. Remember, 240 volt circuits require two spots. The transfer switch has one ground and one neutral for all 10 circuits, which we tie into the main electrical panel. Now this mix of reds and black wires these are your hot wires. Okay. For each 10 circuit, you have a red and you have a black. 
and it's marked. See the C's on these? Yes. Each one of these breakers has a corresponding letter, A through J. Here's your C breaker right okay. here. So to wire the transfer switch, on the main panel, I removed the wire on the circuit breaker that sends power upstairs to the lights and appliances on that circuit and replace it with a new red wire from the transfer switch. The black wire from the transfer switch will splice into the power wire we removed from the circuit breaker. In normal operation, power will feed into the breaker from the utility and head down the red wire to the transfer switch. That power will continue back on the black wires to the selected lights and appliances. When power is lost, the breaker at the panel is no longer in use. Power would then travel in from the manually started generator through a circuit breaker on the transfer switch and back up the black wires to the lights and appliances we selected for emergency power. Okay. All right. Let's do it. All right. We'll send power into the basement from the inlet with this 10-3 non-metallic wiring. Okay, so this is where the power inlet is. The cord can stay inside that. It's a little tricky to get in, so I've given you this hose reel right here. Okay. This is where you can leave the cord all the time. It's very well protected. Now that's a great idea. Now. I have 55 feet of cord. So you can put this anywhere you want in your yard. Okay. They give you a 10 footer, it's That's... just not long enough. Now how I did this was they sell this cable in bulk at the home center. So I just stripped the wires back. I put these ends, which they also sell at the home center, on this and gave you a great cord. Yeah, thanks. All right, so plug this into that heavy duty one right there. Now it's a twist lock. So you push it in all the way and turn it a little bit till it clicks. That's it. Okay. You ready to fire this up? I'm ready. All right, there's four things you have to do. Turn the red button on, and then come over here and turn the gas on, and then the choke all the way open. Now, after it starts, you shut the choke off. Okay. And we're gonna turn the breaker on, we'll run inside and switch the switches. Okay. All right, go for it. All right. Okay, so the generator is sending power to the transfer switch. Okay. And the main breaker outside on the meter socket is still in the off position. Okay. So we have a simulated power outage right now. Right. Why don't we go ahead and hit those switches from line up to generator. Okay. Hey. There you go. We got lights. So we're on generator power right now. Okay. Let's go outside and turn the power back on. All right. All right, the utility power is restored. Okay. You can shut the generator off, put it away in the garage until you need it. Okay. Hopefully you won't. I hope not, but it's good peace of mind knowing that it's there. Yeah, it is.